Hey everybody, we've got an interesting, ugly problem here. And I say interesting because it's a Nissan, uh, and be one of these nice vans. Uh, interesting because it's new, it's a 2018. Uh, ugly, because 60,000 miles and it's got fired up. Ouch! Drive it up just a little. A little more. Whoa, okay. Everybody knows what that sounds like and it ain't good. Sounds like we got a rod about ready to go. Let's pull the oil filter off of it, cut it open, have a look and see if it'll tell us something. But I'm sure the news is not gonna be good, but let's take a look. Okay. Oof. Oh, wow. Look at all this metal in there. It's everywhere in that filter. Oh, yeah. Well, it's what I thought it was. Bearing matter. So, we'll call the customer, explain to him what we need to do. It's basically, you know, open heart surgery. We've got to pull the motor out, open it up, and see what we can do for him. Being a machine shop, we might be able to put a crank kit in it, and, but we'll need to inspect cylinder walls, uh, camshaft journals, timing chain components. We'll vacuum check the heads and the cylinders, make sure we've got no damage to the rings. Because normally this happens on a 60,000 mile car because of lack of lubrication. I, I can't imagine this was a, a fault, a, a part failure. It, it, I'm sure it was lack of lubrication. We want to make sure that the rest of the engine has not suffered. So it's a tear down and inspect. These are the calls that we as shop owners can be difficult. Let's try to make it as easy as possible. This is Dave at Dave's Auto Center in Centerville, Utah. How are you? I'm good. Hey, it's uh, nice to meet you on the phone. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to meet you. It looks like you dealt with uh, my great service writer, Donald, when you dropped this off. Yes. And I'm kind of taking this over for a little bit. So if you've got a moment, I'd like to speak to you about this, your truck. I do. Um, now you. My question to you is, it looks like um, you definitely have the engine noise, it, that, and it does not sound good, and it, that sounds terrible, but I noticed um, that it looks like somebody's resealed the lower oil pan. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, my guy just dropped it to look inside, because it sounded terrible. I said, well, drop the oil, let me see the oil, and if there's you know, material in it, and, and he just got a little excited and dropped the pan and took it to look inside, cleaned out some of the residue, and then put it back in, threw some oil in it, said, hey, could need the motor. We took it to our favorite Nissan dealer and said, go through it. They called and said, oh, it needs a transmission flush, it needs a fuel injector flush, it needs this, it needs that. So we said, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. $4,000 later, we get it back, we put it back in service, we drive it like two weeks and then it starts knocking and we check and there's no oil on the difference. Oh my gosh. $4,000 so, later and you didn't, nobody checked the oil to say, hey, your oil looks dirty. So they did all this gravy suck, they transmission flush, brake fluid flush, coolant flush, and they didn't t say, hey, let's do an oil change? Yes. That's, uh, you know, all, every time yeah. I get into these stories, they're painful for me, Rick. They just, they get, they get painful because I hate to hear this stuff. Not that we don't make mistakes here, but so what I have done yeah. at this point is I have removed the oil filter and I cut it open and it's full of bearing matter. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's full of glitter and bearing matter. And I've, you've already seen that in the pan. So here's what needs to happen. And let me kind of tell you how this will work. I could, if I was a dealership, just sell you an engine. I'd just sell you an engine, pull it out, put it in. But I'm not a dealership. I'm actually the largest machine shop in the Western United States for doing engines. And so this is how we're going to proceed if you would like me to work for you. I've got to pull the engine out. I got to cut the patient open, man. I got to get it in the surgery room. I got to cut the patient open and then assess the damage to the organs. The organs I'm thinking are going to be bad is, you know, connecting rod bearings, may maybe a main bearing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we don't have any other issues because of the oil starvation up higher, like in the camshaft journals, or the timing chain guides or tension, or the, or the cylinder walls. So what we're gonna do, with your permission, I'll give you a quote here in a minute, I just want you to be clear at what our first step is. 
We've got to get the, the engine out of the vehicle, get a look, remove not only the lower pan, but the upper pan, and get a look at the connecting rod bearings and see how much damage is there. Why we do that, we can look at the bottom of the cylinder walls, we'll push the pistons up out of the way and see if we've got any scoring from the oil starvation on the cylinder walls. The engine runs pretty good and I don't have any smoking out of the tailpipe, so I don't think we've got cylinder wall damage at this point, but I don't know until I know, and the only way I can know is with eyes on it. If the engine has not suffered any upper end damage on cylinder walls or camshafts or anything like that, what we can do is put a crank kit in it. We can grind the crank, get new main and rod bearings, put a new oil pump in it, flush the engine out, put it back together and, and uh, you know, get you back up and running. Option two would be, you know, pull the engine out, it's, it's damaged beyond repair, you know, and it needs to be completely uh, remanufactured, which we would still do in-house and give you a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty. One of the next yeah. options would be uh, just pull your engine out and whip a used engine in it. I don't know anything about that engine. I don't know how it was maintained or serviced. So anytime we do a used engine, now I do used parts. I like them when it's just a hunk of part. It's just a piece of metal. But if it's an engine or transmission, my grief and the worry that I have with it is, is has it been maintained? Has it been serviced? You know, that's basically the options you have. I think we can definitely meet your budget, and, and I'm always going to try to make you feel good, even better about it. So we'll go ahead and get the engine out. I'll send you, uh, actually, it'll be Donald. He'll send you a link to pay that, and uh, we'll get the motor out and have some information for you first part of next week. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. It's yep. been a pleasure meeting you. All right. You. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. So... Me and my wife were cooking for the guys today. Okay, actually, I just lied. I'm just gonna help. <laughs> and I'm just gonna throw it in a pan. We have Just Meats here. This is a great product. It's Utah-based. Yeah, Utah. Yeah, Rocky Mountain area. You know, humanely raised on grass-fed, grass-finished. They got it all. They got chicken, pork, beef, already cooked, vacuum sealed. Let's try it. Yeah, this is a healthy meal. We're not gonna feed these guys cheeseburgers, fries, coke. How do you feel after you eat that kind of stuff? We try to give our guys the best food we can because <laughs> that's how we want to keep them going. They're like the Olympic athletes of the motor world and treat them that way. Oh, baby, I like yeah. that. My wife thinks I'm an Olympic athlete. Ooh. <laughs> but this comes straight to your house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order some of this for the house because you guys are always telling me there's nothing to eat around Nothing here. to eat. No protein. This is what you need when you're working, man. Brisket. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is tasty, man. Okay, I make a good brisket. I'm not, it's good. It's dang good, dang right? Delicious. <laughs> $2.50, you get 38 grams of protein. I've done the math. That's a great deal for fresh meat with no additives and things like that. Click on the link below, days 15, and get 15% off. Thanks. We'll uh, get the cooling system drained, get the oil drained, start disconnecting things we don't need, get the motor out. This is the fun part. Let's go. Wow. That just breaks my heart, man, you know. This, does, this, this didn't have to happen, darn it. That's gonna be on one of my t-shirts. It's gonna be, I'm busy, do your maintenance. <laughs> BMW does this, they drive this motor and it changes the rocker arm position. It's kind of interesting. I need to study up on that, on how Nissan's doing that. There's always something new, man. Everybody thinks I might know everything and that'd be a big mistake, I don't know. I don't know a lot. That's what's fun about this job. You get to continue to keep learning. We're gonna uh, take us over to the machine shop in the other building. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wash this first. This thing's a filthy pig, man. This is what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna hang this in my washer. See how fast we fix these motors? Don't I wish. 
I, I get a lot of people commenting, you know, they don't make stuff like they used to. Thank goodness. Let's get real and honest here. That 1970s and 1980s stuff, 1960, wherever, you know, pick a, pick a decade. I mean, you get 100,000 miles out of an old Chevy, uh, you know, 350 Chevrolet back in the day, 1960, 1970. You were doing good because by the time it got to, you know, 100,000 miles, you'd rebuilt the carburetor four times, points and condensers, you know, you change those every year. Remember they used to have things called tune-ups? We well, had to take your car in every year because to tune it up because it would run like crap. You don't have to do that anymore, but you do have to do maintenance on these engines. They won't tolerate abuse. The good old days made garbage. I mean, you can get 600 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated engine today on pump gas, for goodness sakes. You can never do that with a Chevy big block. No way. You can do that now with a motor, a Hemi, and make it your daily driver. But you gotta maintain the dang thing. This is, this is what I do with my son. When we have a father-son outing, we're gonna rip down a motor. Always keep your head gaskets. When you're tearing down a motor and you're building a new, you know, you're building it back, keep your head gaskets. Trust me on this. You want to match that head gasket up with whatever you're going to build it with. It could be a year, a, a production date off, and you might be missing a hole or something. So I, I, that, that's just something I always tell people. Right there. Let me show you. This will probably tell you. See, this is now we put this in the washer because it was so dirty. But see how this is the same color, not discolored. This one here is not discolored. Look how blackened that is. Black is not good on a rod bearing. That, so we're gonna take that one off first. That's, that's probably where our problem is. That's because a lot of heat build up. And that would be it. There it is. There's your problem. Lack of lubrication. This one actually spun the bearing in the rod. That bearing actually spun in the rod. You can see the tang. There's a little bit of one on that rod left. But this one here, it spun that. So that bearing actually caught that journal and spun it around right on the crank. So now we know what the noise was. You know, here's another indication of poor oil changes. I mean, if you look at direct injected motors, there is no ring tension on this top ring, meaning that's about as small, I mean, that's like a piece of wire for crying out loud. I mean, there's no tension on that ring. If this motor had just suffered a rod bearing failure and it was low mileage like this, what I would have done is I would have inspected the cylinder heads, vacuum checked them, cleaned it up, and probably just done a crank kit on it. But because this thing was such a sludge puppy, I'm, I've got to rebuild the whole motor. I can't warranty this by just putting a crank, you know, putting a, a new crankshaft and bearings in this thing. All this guck on the side of the rings, oh, that mean, shouldn't be that way. That thing should be floating. It's just seized in that ring. We won't be using these pistons, that's for sure. World's most expensive oil change right here. The one you don't do. That's the most expensive oil change in the world. Hey, we've got that sludge motor on that NV, and I mean, that thing was funk nasty sludge. It was so expensive to rebuild that motor that we gave the customer an option. And what it is, I don't like to do them. It's a, it's a used engine. But what we do on a used engine, before I stick it in a car, is I want to run it on my sim test. And we're, this is, so we got this used engine from the, uh, from the salvage yard. And if you'll look inside it, it's not sludged up like the other engine is, but we want to run this test and we can run this now. Joey, you want to come over here and help me out? 
what we want to do is we want to run this, this engine because we want to check for oil pressure. First thing we want to do, we want to check to make sure it's got oil pressure. We want to hear it. And we're going to do a running compression test on it. I don't want to put a motor in and then all of a sudden have a, a low hole or something like that. And then have to call the customer and tell them, you know, the bad news. So we have oil pressure and we can watch it and our oil is coming up and it's moving all the cams. No unusual noises. Now what we want to do is we're going to do a compression test on all the holes. We got like 75 pounds there. Let's try another one and see what we get. Big difference. You can also hear how much force you can, you can hear how much more force that hole's got to it. 200 PSI at 200 RPM. Yeah. So we're and, right about there. Yeah, we're and right. This motor's been dry for a while. Yeah. One of the things on this motor, because direct injected, it has a lot of intake valve deposits. Real common problem on a, on a direct injected motor. So now what do we want to do? Before we call the salvage yard, and I got a good relationship with them because I've been doing this for, you know, three and a half decades, I'm going to do a leak down test on the hole. So let's, we're going to leak it down and we're going to find out. Is it going through the rings or is it coming up through the valves? Because maybe we'll just pull the head off and fix this head. 